Welcome to the Sailor Noob Podcast, where a super fan and a noob talk about the original Sailor Moon episode by episode. I'm your host, Mikan Hana, joined by my co-host. I'm the co-host, Caliban, and I'm an Instagram noob. <laughs> yes. But that hasn't stopped us from creating an Instagram account for the show. You can find it at noob underscore sailor on Instagram. That's right. Why do they no let you use Instagram from your computer? You can. It doesn't Tell me how. It, I don't think it lets you do stuff as well, though. Like, yeah. I was trying to figure it out today because I'm, I'm older than I look. No, and, no, a show of confessions. Uh, and I was trying to figure out how to do emojis on, <laughs> like, on Instagram <laughs> on my computer. I could not figure it out. I don't, you what, do a smiley face. Why do I need Russian hackers to just post a picture from my computer? I That's where understand. all my pictures yeah, are. I, I don't get it. I <laughs> okay, don't get well, it. So we I'm are going to surmount these challenges. Yeah. Join us on Instagram at noob underscore sailor. Sorry, continue. And we're a couple of magical people ready to moon prison power make up this episode. Sailor Noob is brought to you by Shuriken Bon Bon. Sure, I can. <laughs> yes. Sure, we all can. Sure, we, everybody can. Uh, today we are talking about episode number 43. Usagi ga Koritsu, Sera Senshi Tachi no Ogenka in Japanese. Usagi abandoned the falling out of the Sailor Guardians, the English translation, and the English title... Fractitious Friends. Mm, yes. Yes. Back to the old alliteration. I, I think that's a pretty good one this week. Did you, we talk about did why job. titles in Japanese are so long? Can you do a whole thing on that? Uh, I what, mean, What's I the don't... tale of Genji? Look out, Genji! <laughs> Many people in the court are talking. <laughs> uh, I mean... <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? Like, why yeah. do they ever name... I mean, like, Ron... That's about the shortest Japanese title I can think of. Like, why it's so much. Because, like, for this, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I would just call it uh, trust. Sure. You right. know, and it's like, who's somebody trusting who? Somebody said, uh, the bad guys don't trust something. And it's everybody's sort of, you know, looking as- askance at, at their uh, allegiances. Yes. But instead, look out, Usagi. I know. You've got to go through the portal or something. It's <laughs> just like. I know. <laughs> I think, um, I don't know, I'm trying to remember because, like, I, there was a point in, you know, when I was younger, I didn't pay attention to episode titles, like, at all. <laughs> well, because it was Fractious Blues. Well, I don't know, but I just didn't. Uh, but I think at least for, for, for this anime in, in, in Japanese, they, they made a conscious choice. We're, we're going to do a title, semicolon, rest of title. That's a long title. You see that a lot in anime, though. Yeah, you do. Um, I don't know a lot of other Japanese. I know works by Japanese authors in English, but I don't know a lot of, like, pure Japanese works. So it's hard. Like, Shogun, great title. Mm-hmm. Not written by a Japanese guy. Um, Literally about a white guy going to Japan. One of my favorite books uh, is written by a Japanese author, and it's uh, and the, the English title is Out. You can't get much shorter than that. Yeah, but so, he wrote it in English. No, she wrote it in Japanese. Or excuse me, she. And it was translated in English. But she's, but yeah, but she also wrote it about 12 years ago. So it's like very modern. Well, I, yeah, it is a more modern thing, I guess. But um, Bad example. Here's a good geez. example. Uh, I'm playing a video game called Ghosts of Shus- Tsushima. Delicious. Mm-hmm. I'll take uh, two Tsushima rolls. Yeah, right. And I want to talk about it quick because it, it deals with things that uh, we've talked about in the program and maybe we'll talk about in the future. Because it's said in the Kurabawa period. Kamakura. The kuka, Kukuruka. Kamakura. The, the, the coconut period. <laughs> yeah. Kamakura. It's said yeah. in the Kamakura period. Yes. See, now, if you talked about this on the show, it would stick in my head, but it uh. just goes right through like a sieve. And that's an interesting period in Japan because it was from the 12th century to like the middle of the 14th century. And it was the period directly after the the tale of Genji period, the Mm -hmm. Heian period, Mm -hmm. which was a very uh, courtly time. Yes. um, The the sort of height of feudal Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, And, you know, well, it's feudal in in one way and it would be feudal in sort of another way later. But it's so it's a central rule 
And everything is like, I'm sure the peasants have it real hard, but everything's kind of cool, uh, yeah. at least as far as Genji's concerned. Mm-hmm. And so they're doing all that good stuff. And then as the Cucamonga, Rancho Cucamonga period starts, Kam- Kamakura. Kamakura period starts, <laughs> uh, things are starting to get a little worse because they're getting kind of more fractious yes. around not only Japan, but that is the start of a series of Mongol invasions yes. of Japan. The Khans are getting too big for their um, furry britches. <laughs> and so Ghost of Tsushima <laughs> is set in like 1275 or something like that. It's, you know, Tsushima is an island off the west coast of Japan yes. that was like the central landing site of the first sort of waves of um, Khan, Khanish troops, of Mongol troops. Mm-hmm. And so you play a samurai who has survived the wave, but almost alone like everyone yes. he knows is killed and he is kind of the lord of this prefecture and he's got to get people whipped up to sort of um, repel the cons mm-hmm. yeah. i don't know how he's going and start you know praying for winds that will uh, destroy the next yeah. fleet that's coming because that's that's really what wind. that's really what yeah. took care of it but, right, right, but right. anyway and so it's fascinating and it's what i like about it is it's not set in the usual uh, sort of edo period or early meiji period that you see um, typical samurais, yes. um, samurais versus guns, you know, if you're going to set it a little later in Meiji period. Um, it's uh, classic. This is like medieval, uh, you know, it's not uh, like the musketeers would be Edo period. Uh-huh. This is like knights on horseback right, in, right, in right. England period you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. or Europe. That's how I think of it, at least. Yeah. And so it's cool because a lot of things are similar. You know, they have wood houses and, and paper doors and that sort of thing. But there's a lot of, like, other elements. Some of the fashion. And um, when you get outside the cities, because this is before uh, the the Warring States period, which came uh, after the... Kamakura. Co- coconut, <laughs> Coconono period, uh, where things got really bad for a while. Then they were okay. And everybody settled down under a military dictator, the Shogun. Yeah. And that's when the rise of the middle class came. And it was good economically eventually for Japan, but it was mm-hmm. a real rough time to be out there. Yeah. And so when you get there, then people start getting money. You start seeing an increase in culture, the pleasure quarters, the ukiyo-e, and yes. all that sort of thing. The uh, actors, traveling entertainers, the right. theater. Yeah. And that sort of thing. This is all pre that. So it's like everything's well and good inside the castle. You go outside of the walls of the castle. People are living in mud huts. Yeah. They're yeah. living in sod buildings. Right. And it's just like you never that's not glamorous, so it never gets shown in like Kurosawa movies or whatever. But it's sure. it's like the the game, I have some issues with the game. It's not perfect. Um, but I would say that's the best part of the game because it's a beautiful game. It's really beautiful. And they have gone to great lengths to depict Japan uh, in that way, at least on this island. Maybe on their driving cars on the big island. I don't know. (laughs) Somehow I doubt it. (laughs) Um, But you can really tell they they did their their research and uh, it's it was, you know, it's very, I think, historically accurate. And um, I can really appreciate that. And um uh, I don't know. I, I think it's there's some elements to it that are pretty cool. Um, I like that when you go to an, an onsen, for example, which we talked about a couple episodes ago, um, your your health bar kind of goes up yeah. if you've been if it's one you haven't been to before, yeah. which I can really appreciate because they're supposed to be good for your health, right? Yeah. So and you go and uh, you can go to um, sort of re- uh, not restive, restive and restful. I don't. I don't. Uh, sorry, people who have to learn English. It's a crappy <laughs> language, but <laughs> restive and restful are antonyms. That's how much our language sucks. But anyway, yeah, it does. you can go to restful places and you have to write haikus I love in it. order to increase your strength. Yeah. And the fu- the one thing, too, is I guess I haven't read a lot of literature about like 13th century um, uh, samuraiing, mm-hmm. but that's really thought of as like later period samurai stuff, right? So I think they kind of took a lot of that stuff that we talked about. The samurai having a sword, but putting it down to pick up the paintbrush right, to study sure. the arts. Bushido, I yeah. think they kind of like grandfathered that back into that this time be. period that to give be. you a feel of a of a you know what you expect from a samurai. Uh, yeah, I could see that because they were probably just like farming in the fields, probably because <laughs> they because they had to you know make money. Right, grow, right, right. Grow grain. Right, right, right. Because you had to, you know, pay Trade. tribute to your shogun or, or whatever. So, right, exactly. Or your damayo. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to take up too much time with that. Um, if anything cool or untoward happens in the game, I guess I'll share it later. But yeah, it's a it's a pretty neat game. If you have a PS4, check it out. Yes. Um, Hit me. All right. Would you like 
to do a synopsis like of this episode. <laughs> Could you please? I'm going to try amuse us and I'm with a synopsis. At, uh, John Mushita was the guy that talked really fast when I was a kid, the Micro Machines guy. And we've talked about this years yeah, ago. Okay. We talked about this on Just Enough Trope. Who's the modern John M- Machine? Machine? What did I say? Machino? Yeah, I. Machita. Gosh, I don't know. I, I yeah, you didn't know then either. No, I know. I um, think it's maybe like Twista, the rapper. It's it's probably like a rapper or like a probably a lyricist, right? Um, yes, because you know the only other thing that I could think of is somebody those run the jewels guys. They talk real fast. They, or they do. rap real fast. They do. The only other thing I was thinking this would be of my killer, Mike, is somebody course. who could talk really fast is um, uh, you know, like like a like Jeremy an, Piven, au- like an auctioneer, <laughs> like you know, Jeremy Piven's funnier, or uh, or you know, like we got we got five hundred dollars. Hey, Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon, Sailor Moon. Yeah, well, we're killing our time here. Yeah, we are. I hope you're. Uh, you. I hope all, all of our segments after the break are short because this is going to take a long time. I'll do my best. We open at night under the stars. The moon is veiled by clouds, and we see what looks like these sailor scouts running across a field. They are chasing someone, and they all do like a anime style jump, flying yeah. through the air, speed lines, and they do a flip, and they exclaim, "Prepare to die, Sailor Moon!" Hey, what is the clouds part, and the light of the moon reveals the inner senshi surrounding Sailor Moon, telling her to give up. But Sailor Moon re- refuses, and Sailor Venus says, then we have no choice. And Sailor Mercury says, goodbye, stupid girl. Wait, and Mars what? says, in the name of Mars, I'll discipline you. And she lets off a fire soul that hits the ground and uh, hits, like, all of them. It gives them a hot foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're all like, whoa, ha, whoa, ha, whoa. <laughs> And Mars is like, oh, whoops, sorry. And we don't know what's going on with that. And then we see a shadowy figure watching the girls from afar. Plot twist. That was a teaser. I know. We haven't even hit the title screen yet. I know. Title card. Uh, we come back. We're in the Dark Kingdom. And Beryl's globe explodes with light and energy. Mm-hmm. No, it's out of warranty. <laughs> Startling her and Kunzite. <laughs> They've been detecting strange energy eruptions, and Kunzite thinks something may be affecting the silver crystal. He calls for Oniwa Bandana. Yeah. And a gray haired ninja looking woman comes out of the floor, and I mean like out through the floor. Yes. She appears like Ninja Scroll released in the same year. Uh, he asks her if her investigation is complete, a little off screen business. Mm-hmm. And she says, Bon Bon, which. We'll probably get into that later. And <laughs> throws two cards to Kunzite and Beryl. Yes. And they both have their little, um, their, the, all pageantry and, and, and flair. And, oh, yes. And Elon in the Dark Kingdom. Kunzite snaps his out of the air, ninja style. And Beryl sort of lazily, like, telekinetically stops hers and then just picks it out of the air. Mm-hmm. And Beryl's like, all right, this is blank. What's, what's this for? And Oniwa, I'm going to call her Oniwa. Oniwa says... Bon bon, and she makes the movie camera shape over her eye. You know, you should be in pictures. Yeah, yeah. Her eye flashes, and images of the sailors' fight appear on the cards, the fight that we saw. Yes. It's pretty cool. I think so, too. And she says the flashes of energy are because Sailor Moon is fighting the other guardians. Mm-hmm. Bon bon. <laughs> Beryl's like, um, hmm, is this a falling out, or is it a trap? Because liars won't believe anyone else. Yeah, well. We've pulled so much crap on them. <laughs> Kunzai says, I'm going to need more time to figure this out because I'm bad at my job. <laughs> Oniwa, he says, uh, continue your inst- investigation. And she says, at once, bon bon, and disappears. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, presumably that evening at OSP, the jewelry store. Yes. Uh, and just a note, it's impossible to not be spoiled on this damn show. <laughs> I forgot Naru's family name. Actually, I didn't. I did know it, but I wanted to confirm it. It's Osaka. Yes. And I googled Naru Osaka, and uh-huh. the autocomplete is throwing up things that I don't want to see. I'm oh, like, no. I'm so sorry. So we'll just let that go by. <laughs> we hear a jewelry case smash, an alarm goes off, and a voice says, "Bon bon." Yes. Bon bon. And Naru and her mom appear downstairs, brandishing a firing pan and a golf club, respectively. Mm-hmm. They see Oniwa Bandana with a fist full of gems. She says, I'm taking some jewels. And she throws a full fist of knives yes. at the Osakas, pinning them to the wall like they're with a knife thrower in the carnival. Yes. Bon bon. <laughs> Actually, this is fun, but you know, if I repeat every bon bon she says, half of what I say is going to be bon bon. So let's just assume. <laughs> She says this after everything she says. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Osaka faints and Naru is freaked out, but who should appear 
but Sailor Moon. Hold it right there, she says, plus her usual spiel. Mm -hmm. Before she can finish, though, a red pump kicks her off her perch. She hits the ground, and the Sailor Guardians are here, and they're not impressed. Nope. There's a real Mean Girls vibe here. It's kind of like... Why should Usagi get all the daifuku while the rest of us try not to get killed by Gigi? What's so great about Usagi, hmm? Minako's just as cute as Usagi. Wouldn't it become okay for one girl to be the boss of everybody? We should totally just stab Usagi! Uh, Usagi is mad that the girls interrupted her. The girls are hurling insults at her. It's a huge fight. And Oniwa leaps away from the scene behind a wall and transforms into a photojournalist. Yes. But not Cameron, sadly. She's got a bandana on her head it's very fitting yeah she's got like like a native american braid you know the thing uh she's got a buckskin vest she's got flared jeans with a star patch but this yeah. is your bit sorry we'll wait for the end of the show for that <laughs> and she looks like a 70s journalist caricature or like a yep. counterculture you know type character uh she looks like a dennis hopper character uh she and she does. starts yes. taking mad flash photography uh to you know drive the point home she's also throwing out headlines she's like Sailor Guardians fighting at the scene of a crime. News at 11. <laughs> she says that she's a freelance writer for the weekly Dokiri magazine. Mm-hmm. And Minako says, Dokiri? That's a sleazy rag that'll print anything. And that's a superhero. I assume she's run into this before. Yeah. And oh I my God. So. Oh my God. Please say there is a J. Jonah Jameson character somewhere in this show. I guess Get me I pictures of Sailor Moon. <laughs> Um, that would be fantastic. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Um, I would love for the Sailor Moon Spider-Man comparison to continue. Great honestly. Caesar's ghost. Yeah. Wait, that's Perry White. Sorry. That's Lois Lane's boss. The journo says, yep, yeah, we're the worst. So what's this fight about? Speaking to the tape recorder. But Usagi is like, <laughs> oh, no, we're just horsing around. Right, girls? But the girls leave her hanging on that one. The journo is like, I knew it. Is it because Sailor Moon is always messing up? Are you fighting over a boy? Wow, what's the Ooh. next question? Did your periods go out of sync? All right. What kind of journal? I guess they said they'll print anything, but wow. Yeah, a little personal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a way to sell out your own sex. Uh, the girls are like, whatever, I'm out of here. <laughs> And Usagi is like, that could have gone better. And Naru is like, can you get me off my wall? Outside, the journalist we see has not left. She's looking through the window or the door, and she's spying on them. But across the street, atop a building, Artemis and Luna are watching her. Yes. And that's it. We don't get any context on that. No. It's spyception. It is. Yeah. <laughs> Next day on the way to school, Naru tells Usagi about this crazy robbery that happened the night before. And she says, yeah, it was weird. It seemed like the Sailor Scouts were like fighting with me amongst each other. And Usagi says, well, I don't know about that and all the other Scouts. But Sailor Moon is cute and sweet. She wouldn't fight. <laughs> Just then the journalist pops out. Oh, my God. <laughs> and shoves her tape recorder in Usagi's face. And Usagi says out loud, the lady from last night. But because this show... <laughs> Has a lot more episodes, I'm presuming. I guess the journalist doesn't hear her. I guess. That would have been an instant secret identity fail. Yeah. Oh, my God. The person I talked to last night in the guise of Sailor Moon. <laughs> uh, the journalist says, I, my name is Nana Asahina, freelance journalist, mm-hmm. and hands Usagi her card. Yes. She says, you two seem pretty close to Sailor Moon. And Usagi says, sort of. Careful. Steady. Yeah. Steady. <laughs> Uh, there's a long tradition of that. Like Clark Kent's like, oh, yeah, Superman's a friend of mine. I'll right. go talk to him for you. Right, right. Uh, Nana says, you say Sailor Moon wouldn't fight. Hmm? Why? You, Tanaru. Sailor Moon has saved you many times. Did she say anything about the other Guardians that was bad? And Usagi and Nara are like, uh, we're late for school. See ya. And as Nana walks away dejected, we see Artemis spying on her from atop a wall. Yes. We also see that Nana has platform clogs on like big yep. 70s shoes which yep. is just which is just great yep chef's kiss mm-hmm. she looks like if Jacqueline Smith had to go undercover as a feminist on Charlie's Angels she wasn't she wasn't a feminist on Jacqueline Charlie's was Angels? a brunette so she was the smart one uh, okay yeah <laughs> And we also see Luna come out from hiding with a suspicious look on her little kitty face. Yeah. That's a suspicious kitty there. <laughs> that night at Hakaba Shrine, it's an anime fight. 
the girls are all attacking Sailor Moon in the voluminous woods that we know is on the property. Right. <laughs> Kicking, punching. Usagi's dodging. Ami's asking her, what's the square root of two? <laughs> Which was so... That's such a great bit. I love it. Yeah. And Usagi's face is like, oh, no. <laughs> uh, and Usagi gets a big kick in the behind from a red pump. Yep. And down she goes again. And Usagi says, ah, she kicked me for real. And Sailor Mars, of course, is there. She says, if we don't get serious... Why are we training? Mm -hmm. If it's not Goose Island, why am I here? <laughs> Which is an inside joke that someday we'll explain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this, it seems like this is the mythical training we've heard so much about. I'm not sure what's going on at this I point. Don't, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, but we'll see. Yes. Uh, Usagi says there was hate in that kick. <laughs> and Mars says, well, this is, your, your, this is your idea. Stop being a wimp. We have to make it look like we're really fighting. <laughs> yeah. It was a trap. I know. I thought Beryl was crazy and paranoid. Yeah, you did too. She's been around the block a few million times. <laughs> anyway, Mars says, we have to make it look real so the Dark Kingdom will invite you to their hideout. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm not so excited now. This is a uh. Kunzite level plan. <laughs> this is like Wile E. Coyote, you know, dressed up as a stick of dynamite like level plan. Kind of is. But Looney yeah. and, <laughs> Lo Looney and Arda... Uh, yeah. That too. Luna and Artie show up and Luna, Luna says, this is a really dangerous plan. Yeah. <laughs> we hate this plan. But you wanted to do it, Usagi. This is your idea to get Tuxedo Mask back. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're going to do it. I guess so. Later, the girls are back in their street clothes and Artie says, there's something strange about that journalist. And the girls are looking at an article using photos from that night. This is her article. Mm -hmm. And Usagi is like, well, my face looks weird in this pic. And Ray says, oh, that's how it always looks. This is not accepted graciously by no. Usagi. Artie says, this reporter came out of nowhere. She's really popular. She writes political, economic, entertainment stories. You name it. But she seems weird. <laughs> but thanks, Artemis. Artie didn't read the newspapers. No, Luna did, not Artie. <laughs> Someone suggests that maybe that she has been turned into a monster, so they're a little ahead of the curve. Uh -huh. <laughs> but because of the circumstances, it doesn't matter. They have to go through this plan. Yeah. Uh, and Usagi is like, you guys, we did it. My plan is totally working. They yeah. want to kill me. And Luna says, uh, are you sure you're ready for this? And Mako encourages her. She says, we got your back. And Ray says, should I go in your place? And Usagi's like, you would say that. <laughs> you guys beat me to a pulp and then you just waltz in. Oh, now, now you're the leader. Whoa. <laughs> and everyone's like, okay, calm down, calm down. And Ray says again, well, a certain someone is always screwing things up. Is this like public knowledge? I, yeah, I the don't. The muckraking reporter is like, oh, well, we all know Usagi's like the screw up of the group. That is a good point. Yeah. I, how would anybody outside of the group and the Dark Kingdom, oh, oh. How would they know their dynamic? It. That's it. The Dark Kingdom knows that she's a screw up. So Kunzai. Right, but they're tipping your hand her. there. I, you're right. I don't, I don't think it's in the general press that she's a screw no, up. No, no, I don't think all so. Right, well, that's okay. We're all making mistakes tonight. <laughs> mistakes were made. And at this, um, Ray and Usagi both stick their tongues at each other, out at each other. And I guess the sound that goes with that in Japan is. Bleh. Yeah, if you stick your hand so, underneath your eye and stick your tongue out, it's akum. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's like, it just accelerates. So it's like, it's pretty great. It, it is. I approve. Later, Usagi is headed to the home of Nana Asahina. It's probably the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, and she lives at the Azabu Apartments. And it's a nice building. Yeah. It's got a tower. Mm -hmm. Usagi gets a little nervous, but she looks over and sees the curls. <laughs> pop out from behind a wall like yeah. hello 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 <laughs> and they're doing the peace signs everything's cool I love uh, it. nana opens her apartment door and usagi says sailor moon told me to give you this letter and she hands her an envelope mm -hmm. it's sealed with a luna sticker yep i should mention that luna is on her shoulder <laughs> should have got her that domino mask like we talked I about i know i know well, i don't recognize this cat yeah nana reads the letter and it says I don't want to be a pretty guardian anymore. I have a shocking confession. Meet me at Juban Cemetery at 11 p.m. And Nana's like, why'd she give this to you? And Usagi says, uh, people always say that I'm, I'm trustworthy. <laughs> it's like, and wow, Luna's like, laugh. well, yes, but actually no. And yeah. Nana's like, I've got a scoop. <laughs> <laughs> Usagi, she's deep female laughing. I know. You know what that means. Yes. Yeah. Now the break. Now the break. <laughs> With so much left. I know. I'm just going to say right now, Dumb Bunny 1. 
Usagi, yeah. we um, we uh, wobble a little bit, mm-hmm. but uh, it keeps flying. Mm-hmm. This is all her plan. Yes. And uh, we'll talk about how the plan turns out, but mm-hmm. it's I think she's really on it this week. I do too. In the Dark Kingdom, Kunzite asks Oniwa for progress, and she appears upside down from the ceiling. She's just showing off now. Yeah, I know. And she flicks out the letter she got from Usagi, and it sort of disappears and reappears in Kunzite, Kunzite's hand. She's got a lot of cool ways of handing things to other people. She does, <clears throat> yeah. Kunzite reviews it. While Oniwa tells him, Sailor Moon has definitely quit the Guardians. Mm-hmm. And Kunzite is like, I can dispense with objects just as cool. And it bursts into flame in his hands. And he says, uh, time to make my appearance. Speaking of time, we cut to a clock striking 11. We're in Juban Cemetery and Sailor Moon is waiting. Oniwa Bandana appears behind Sailor Moon and says, thanks for your letter. But when Sailor Moon turns around, it's Nana. I know. And she asks, uh, do you really want to leave the Sailor Guardians? And Sailor Moon says, yes, I don't even want to look at them. And Nana says, in that case, bon, 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 bon. <laughs> and she transforms into Oniwa Bandana. Yes. Kunzite appears atop the clock tower. And Usagi says to him, meaning you wasn't part of the agreement. I'm here for an interview. <laughs> and Oniwa's like, yeah, that that's not going to happen now. There's not going to be an interview, Bon Bon. <laughs> Kunzite says, you know, if you join us, you can see Endymion anytime you want. I'll give you a million Endymions. Yeah. And Usagi says, are you kidding? I'm not going for that. And Kunzite says, you know, you know, Endymion, he's he's not doing good. He's in a bad way. He'd sure like to see you. Uh, if you don't want to join us, uh, what if he just came to visit Endymion? Mm-hmm. You know, well, I'll tell you what. You give us a silver crystal, you can come see Endymion anytime you want to. Because he's really sick that he could die. Right. <laughs> and Usagi is struggling with this. But eventually she says, all right, you have a deal, but I get to see Tuxedo Mask first. Nice. Get proof yeah. of life Yes, first. Across the cemetery, the other scouts are hiding and they say, okay, he's taking the bait. But Oniwa seems to sense their presence. Mm-hmm. And she tells Kunzite, who says, oh, crap, well, I guess this was a trap after all. Mm-hmm. Usagi fails her sense motive check yeah. and doesn't realize the villains are on to her because uh-huh. she's still trying to sell the bit. She's like, come on. Come on, let's go. Let's go already. Yeah. When are we going to get to the Dark Kingdom? <laughs> and the sooner I'm away from Sailor Mars, the better. Yeah. <laughs> just, just add that little bit. Yeah. Just get feeling the ad lib. Kunzite is like, I like your resolve. Why don't I just zoe a portal to the Dark Kingdom behind you and you just step right, just go right through it. Yeah, Just right. go right through it. And Usagi looks into the scary black portal and she's like, ooh, I don't know. And Kunzite asks her if she's changed her mind, but she says, no, no, no. You know, you're as mean as Sailor Mars. When we cut to Mars in the bushes, who's like, again with the Mars stuff. I know. Usagi is just about to step through the portal when, I don't know why things break down in negotiations. I mean, if they have her in the Dark Kingdom, like that's it, right? Like right. she can't fight the whole cocktail party. Right. But Oniwa jumps the gun and she flips a scarf around Usagi's neck and starts choking her. Mm-hmm. And she's uh, saying, all right, give up the silver crystal. But Usagi says, no, not till I see Tuxedo Mask. <laughs> but Oniwa says, uh, how about we kill you and I take the crystal? That's the new deal. Right. But Sailor Moon says, the crystal isn't here. Another good in these negotiations. Yep. You never have the money on you. That's right. It's in some other location. <laughs> Kunzite says, when you're dead, the crystal will be useless. So it doesn't matter either way, right? Mm-hmm. Pick a spot. You're going in the ground. Right. This whole time, the Sailor Scouts are ready to spring into action, but Mars is like, no, no, we'll just see how this plays out. Everybody's wait. Mm-hmm. And Usagi thinks, the bad guys are trying to draw the Scouts out, and then they'll all be in trouble. So don't come out, girls. Stay where you are. Right. But the girls are chomping at the bit, though. And Jupiter finally jumps up, saying, you know, screw this, I'm going in. But Mars is like, steady, steady. Mm-hmm. And Jupiter's like, you really hate her, don't you? I know she stole your boyfriend, but geez. <laughs> And Mars says, hey, I wouldn't hold on to something this important for someone I don't like. And she reveals she is carrying the moon stick. Yes. Crystal intact. Uh-huh. And Jupiter's like, oh, ooh, yeah, I get it. Not so smart now, are you? Yeah. 19-year-old, <laughs> sixth grader, seventh grader. <laughs> wow. And Jupiter says, go, man. Yes. Across the cemetery, it's not looking good for Sailor Moon. She's fading fast. The girls are unable to come to her aid. It's tough to watch. Finally, Mars also says, I'm screwed. I can't take it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Leaps into action. The other Sailor Scouts following her. They all do their intros. They get a Charlie's Angels pose at the end. Mm -hmm. Kunzite's not impressed. He's like, please, we've already figured out your scheme. 
wait your turn to die. But Marsh just lets off a raging fire soul. I don't know if that's different than a regular fire, fire soul. This is a it, raging fire soul. It seems soul. like maybe there's a little more oomph to it. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it explodes between Usagi and Oniwa, blowing them back and freeing Sailor Moon. Maybe it's the explosive version. Yeah. Uh, Jupiter follows up with a shoot cream sundae mixed with a crescent beam, courtesy mm-hmm. Sailor Venus, which hits Kunzai dead on. But he no-sells it, and he just disappears. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, all right. Okay, I guess we're not fighting you today. <laughs> Oniwa draws a huge sword out, and she's like, yep, it's die time, yep. and attacks Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon is dodging left and right. She's got that practice in the bamboo forest before. And Mars says, hey, she throws her the moonstick, mm-hmm. which Usagi catches and uses to block Oniwa's sword, which snaps in half. Mm-hmm. The girls are like, all right, come on. Do the math. You're outnumbered. Give it up. Right. But Oniwa isn't done. She goes, and she starts to split into five Oniwa bandanas. Yeah. Who all pull out throwing knives. It's a lot of knives. Yeah. Saying, we're going to turn you into mincemeat. But Sailor Mercury says, yeah, we're not doing that. Shabon spray. Yep. And she clouds the battlefield. The Oniwas are confused. We hear the voice of Sailor Moon say, Man, I can't believe you figured out this plan. I spent all night coming up with it. (laughs) In the name of the moon, I'll punish you. The Oniwas charge at the Sailor Scouts, but a fire soul gives them all the hot foot. Yes. So we close it up. She was actually practicing, I I guess. I know. Uh, it causes the extras to disappear. There's just one Oniwa bandana, and Usagi gives her the moon healing escalation. Our journalist has returned. Yes. Sailor Moon says, why'd you guys come out? I totally had it. But Mars says, you were howling like a baby. And Usagi says, what have I ever cried? <laughs> but 30 Rock hadn't been invented yet. So Ray says, uh, you cried today at 11.16 p.m. and 28 seconds. <laughs> Usagi just wanted some diet slices and some pita chips. <laughs> the girls start their... Bleh, 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 bleh. Yes. <laughs> and Nana breaks in to ask, are the Sailor Guardians going to break up? <laughs> ever the journalist... <laughs> I guess she's fine. (laughs) And that's, yeah, she's okay. We always wonder, we always wonder what they think happened when they wake up, but she just wakes up and she's like, Hmm, story. story. (laughs) Yeah. Is that story? Her news hound senses take over. Uh, Yeah, exactly. How would you describe just Enough Trope. We are the Just Enough Trope podcast. I'm your host, Caliban, joined as always by my co-host. Hi, I'm Mikan Hana. Oh no, does this mean they can hear all the things I yell at the TV during Downton Abbey? Why did you do that? How do you plead? Let the game begin. Yeah, check these fresh moves. Oh! Don't shoot man in face. This isn't the Save Gotham fundraiser. It's the Chill Family Reunion. Master Yoda assigned a Padawan to this bold Jedi. I think it's pronounced Padawan. Oh, Padawan, excuse me. Hey, it's getting late. I think Ralph's going to want his motorcycle back. Uh, come check out the pictures of Dean Gray. I am freaking getting old. <laughs> yeah, I noticed the life clock was blinking in your hand. Get out of here, Wilson. Go fight the Teen Titans or something. I'm unkillable, not unwoundable. You like Sailor Moon, right? Why don't you sail on this d- oh, Wow. Just enough trope. News, reviews, and geek fondue. Every Monday on the Just Enough Trope Podcast Network. Loving me never have a say you so be sorry. What? For Kiro Kiro Miru, curiously looking around when we talk about elements of Japanese culture within the episode, uh, today we're going to talk about newspapers and freedom of press in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> what about those rags that'll print anything? Yeah, well, they do exist. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll shut they, up. that's the thing. <laughs> uh, Japanese newspaper or shinbun uh, is similar to their newspapers all over the world and report on a large spectrum of topics ranging from general news oriented papers to tabloids. Uh, Japanese newspapers began in the 17th century as yomi uri, which literally means to read and sell. Yomi? Uh, yo- yomi Uri. Okay. Yomi Uri, yeah. Spell it. Uh, Y-O-M-I-U-R-I. Yeah. Uh, an- another format was Kawaraban, which literally means uh, tile hey. block printing. What? Which... I'm, I'm Ikanana. I'm Kawaraban. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, stop it. 
uh, which refers to I'm the, Yoki Uri. Yeah, right. Wait, yeah. Where'd you get Wait from? what? <laughs> <laughs> which refers to the utilization of clay printing blocks, which were uh, printed single sheet pamphlets sold in major cities to commemorate major social events. So and like prints, gatherings. like woodcuts or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so wait, so <laughs> I guess, oh, wow, I guess like when you, Hokusai, he contemplates the great wave. Right. And then he carves it into a piece of wood backward, right. backwards <laughs> right. and, then, and then puts it on a piece of paper. Oh, amazing. Yes. Extra, extra. Here's the new edition. Do you just throw the block of wood away? Yeah. Actually, if you, if you clay, plan it right. Yeah. Or, or clay. Yeah, yeah. I guess. But they did do wood blocks though, didn't they? They did wood printing at some point in the Edo, um, Edo period. Maybe they did. In the I guess Edo if you plan it right, you could just shave, get a plane and just shave off yesterday's news. That's yesterday's news. That's yesterday's news. What are these Tuesday's shavings on the ground? Yesterday's, yesterday's news. Yesterday's news. Yeah. The, the first modern newspaper in Japan was published in 1861 and was called the Nagasaki Shipping List and Advertiser, which was published biweekly by the Englishman uh, A.W. Hansard. <laughs> no! What? Mr. Newspaper! Yeah, well... No! Yeah, I guess you're right. I, did, I didn't think about that, but... It's, no, I'm Mr. Newspaper. Here's a book on how to make newspapers. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Uh, in 1862, so just um, I just the following year, uh, the Tokugawa shogunate began publishing the Kampan uh, Batabia Shimbun, which was an exclusively or an extensively, excuse me, distributed Dutch government newspaper that was translated into Japanese. Oh, Dutch. Yeah, but uh, despite the fact that the Kampan, why would uh, they want to read about the D- the Dutch government? I think they were like, here's a new thing. Let's see how it goes. Like, we oh. don't really have newspapers. Let's okay. see how this goes. These whiteies are doing this and you, that. Right. Huh. Well, uh, I just don't see why that would well, be interesting. I, well, <laughs> here's the thing, though. Despite the fact that the Kampan Batabia mostly carried foreign news, it was very popular with the general... Pu- well, stop. <laughs> with the yeah, Samurai. No. Seeking same. Okay. Uh, very popular with the general public and had been the had uh, largely not been allowed any knowledge of almost anything that was considered to be foreign because they were... Still mostly a, a closed country at that <laughs> so point. Then, look, look, they got wood shoes too. <laughs> like, what is? What are they so excited about? Uh, I don't know. Uh, so, just some some general uh, knowledge about newspapers in Japan. Uh, when I was learning Japanese in school in the early two thousands, I was told by my sensei that in order to read a newspaper in Japanese. Um, You needed to be able to recognize the uh, most common kanji, so at least at least a thousand of the most common kanji. Okay. Um, And this apparently will get your comprehension level of a Japanese newspaper to be about 94.6%. For a thousand characters. For a thousand characters. What do they say, if you don't remember, don't worry about it. Okay. What what do they say, like, you have to to achieve, like, basic fluency in... um... I guess you're not reading the characters if you're speaking, but I just mean like to read like a novel or or a reference oh, book. Well, see, they I think they use the newspaper most generally to be like fluent, you know, for for your basic. Um, I, I it depends. I think I've seen anywhere from like if maybe you'd be considered fluent if you could read like. 2,000, 2,500. That's not so bad. I thought it was um, like the 10,000s or something. No, I mean, so, so this is a thing, right? There, Nobody's 100% sure how many kanji there are. I think there's somewhere around 5,000-ish. Do a survey. But I know, I know. But <laughs> Get a so, guy yeah, in I a know. van. I know. Have him start at the top. Yep. Uh, what's the, the, the top one? Hokkaido. Yeah. Okay. And then just drive down. Yeah, I know. And stop. Get something from a vending machine and go, what kind of characters you guys got? (laughs) Is that going to be some guy hiding in a bunker who's like, I've got the last 300 characters. Nobody's ever getting these characters. Yeah, right. This one means cotton candy machine. (laughs) Yeah, I know. It's like collectibles in a video game. Yeah. It's like trying to get the last Gwent card. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, traditionally, Japanese was written in vertical columns. These columns were read from top to bottom and from right to left. This me- method of Japanese writing is called uh, tategaki, which literally means vertical writing. 
Modern Japanese can also be written in horizontal lines. When it is written in this way, it is read from left to right, just like English. This method of Japanese writing is called yokogaki, which literally means horizontal writing. Uh, yokogaki has been in common utilization since the end of World War II. Gaki means writing. I think so. He deduced. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Exactly. From a sample set of two. <laughs> Nickelodeon gaki. The... <laughs> That's uh, those big balloony letters. Sorry. Right. There you go. Uh, Japanese newspapers tend to use a combination of both uh, takegaki and yokogaki. For example, the headline and body of an article might be written in uh, takegaki, so vertical writing, and a photo caption might be written in yokogaki or horizontal writing, if that makes sense. Can you picture that? No, yeah, I can. And yeah. I don't know why they just can't do the whole thing horizontally then they figured out the picture thing um, why is I it why it's... isn't it takigaki on the side huh? on mm-hmm. the side of the picture then why don't they put the caption on the side because they like how it looks underneath i think maybe it's an aesthetic thing why isn't their newspaper just a long scroll since it's wow. all vertical wow. <laughs> give me the sports page hold on yeah i know right? rip rip there you go <laughs> Uh, Japanese newspapers have a fold on the left-hand side as opposed to the fold being on the right-hand side in the West. Makes sense. Yes. Uh, The four leading national daily newspapers in Japan are the uh, Yomi Uri Shimbun, which, again, literally means to read and sell, so like the first newspapers Hmm. in Japan. Uh, The Asahi Shimbun, which literally means morning sun newspaper, so there's a lot of things that are called named Asahi Asahi beer means morning sun beer. Yeah. <laughs> it, they're it the not same, related. Is it like the Asahi Brewery Company owns the paper? No, they're, they're not related. Oh, okay. Yeah. There, there's a lot of towns named Asahi. Asahi well, the, is a very popular thing. This character is As- Asahina, mm-hmm. which is, I mean, I don't know how if it works the same in Japanese, but that's phonetically very similar to it is. Asahi. Maybe that was a thing. Hmm. Don't kick yourself because you didn't look it up. Don't I, worry about I, it. I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Leave that one to the audience to okay. tell us. <laughs> Uh, uh, Mainichi Shimbun, which literally means daily newspaper, like Mainichi is daily or every day. Okay. Uh, and the, uh, Seikyo Shimbun, which literally means the newspaper of the Holy Teach. Um, Yomuri is conservative, conservative, Asahi and Mainichi are both center left. And Seikyo is owned and operated by the Japanese Buddhist organization, Soka, uh, Gakkai. The most popular national daily English language newspaper in Japan uh, is the Japan Times. Whoa, so you blew through a lot of, I, a lot uh, of information a lot of information. There. I know. First of all, we discovered that the the country is so right, it might tip over. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which is, I mean, I knew they were like uh, socially conservative, but they're very politically conservative, I guess, as well. If the best they can muster is center left. And I can't imagine that that... Yeah. That Buddhist newspaper is particularly uh, liberal, or, or is it? I don't know. Well, so I was trying to find – they didn't, like I, – I looked, and it doesn't say, like, what they – if it's considered, you know, right or left. And or, do they – You know what I mean? Well, that's interesting. So. I wish we could read Japanese fluently so we could read an issue of it. But, yeah. Um, what – do they report on just the normal news stories? Uh, they do. It, so uh, from what I read um, – the guy who is the, the president or the head of the organization, um, it's it's a lot of news about him. And then sometimes, <laughs> yeah, well, and then sometimes he writes essays, but they also um, this uh, is a, okay. have like actual I, news stories I'm and not stuff like that too. I'm not equating uh, um, Unification Church with Buddhism, but it sounds like Unification Church a lot. I can't remember if they are offended by Moonies or not, but that's what the... You know, Sunky Moon is yeah. the... Yeah. So it is like, well, Mr. Moon says, or excuse me, Reverend Moon says, have a great day, and here's some ways well, you can do it. It's like, why is this the front page? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was, guess I see what you're there saying. There was an earthquake. Right, well, and I'm then, sure they reported Moving on, on to the last thing, the Japan Times, is that written with an international audience in mind? Um, I I think so. Yeah. Um, they they do have a very large um online presence as well. Mm. I, yeah, I, I've definitely seen English language Japan Times articles. Yeah, and I've um utilized them a lot as references for doing research for the show. Ooh. However, just like a lot of Western online papers, I think I've reached my limit. So <laughs> <laughs> I can. Uh, <clears throat> 
Sure, I had to get around that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll, t- we'll take care that of that. That would be most helpful. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, that that's definitely, um, definitely a thing. Uh, as of 2007, the number of the morning papers, as uh, some papers in Japan published issues in both in the morning and in the evening. That's actually fairly common. Mm, you get that sometimes here. Um, uh, the top four newspapers in Japan uh, were Yomi Uri with um, over 10 million copies sold daily. Um, Asahi with uh, over 8 million copies sold daily. Uh, Sekyo, which is the Buddhist paper, with uh, 5.5 million copies sold daily. And Mainichi with nearly 4 million copies sold daily. Those are big numbers. They are big da- big numbers. And in fact, as of 2018 still, and this is, um, this is physical newspapers, uh, Yomiuri was the highest ranking physical newspaper in the world to be sold daily. Huh. And number two was Asahi. Okay. So, and I think number three was USA Today. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> so does like uh, Asahi have the like very dumb basic like graphs and pie charts and things like that? Yeah, like yeah, USA I Today. Don't, has? I don't know. Like it's it's hard to say, right? Like do Japanese coloring books go right to left? <laughs> I think the answer is probably yes. just uh, yeah. just out of curiosity. Yeah, I think the answer is probably yes. Um, throughout their history, but especially in the 20th and 21st centuries, Japanese newspapers have had a principal role in matters of freedom of the press and freedom of speech. In the period of the Taisho democracy, which refers to the reign of Emperor Taisho, which was 1912 to 1926, during which there was a vast development of thinking in new ways, a reinforcement of social movements and growth of party politics, the government maneuvered to quell newspapers such as the Asahi Shimbun for their critical viewpoints in opposition to the government bureaucracy and supported safeguarding constitutional democracy and citizens' rights. Hmm. During the 1930s and 1940s, which was a time of expanding militarism that led up to World War II, newspapers encountered extreme government control and censorship. Hmm. After the war... Severe censorship of the press proceeded as the American occupiers utilized government control in order to instill anti-communist and democratic principles. So people like Nana are out there pounding the pavement, right. taking the pictures. That's right. And then their articles are getting spiked. <laughs> sure that the happened. man is trying. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because it mirrors a lot. Um, it's not. I was going to say it's funny. It's not funny. It's called colonialism. But it's funny yeah. how... The democracies, uh, well, the quote unquote democracies in some cases, of um, the um, Southeast Asia mirror those of um, like the United Kingdom. Mm. I don't think they do. Well, they probably do it because they kept a lot of tradition in Hong Kong when they changed over, but their system was just the British, the British system, system of law right. forever. Right. Um, Japan is a constitutional monarchy, mm-hmm. um, even though we <laughs> we conquered them or won the war. Right. They're like, oh, we're going to do constitutional monarchy. We like having that emperor. It just feels feels good. Feels good, yeah. And the reason I bring it up is because you got the same thing in Britain where the press is allowed to just talk crap about whatever they want for the most part. Yeah. But the queen still has the lever she can pull where it's like, yes. nope, you're not doing that. Right. So they have a cutoff switch for their freedom of press. And yes. It sounds similar to Japan. I, I think you're probably right. Um, for for the 2020 World Press Freedom Rankings that are put together Uh-oh. by the Reporters Without Borders, <laughs> which is a media advocacy organization. Uh, this, so this is the 2020 ranking. Uh, Japan ranked 66 out of 180 countries. In comparison, Norway was ranked first, North Korea was last, and the United States was 35th. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, Japan's ranking of the freedom of press started to, cl- to decline after the 2011 meltdown of at the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Mm-hmm. The press, unfortunately, went along with the government and TEPCO, the company that ran the Fukushima uh, Daiichi nuclear power plant, uh, which is the one that melted down, yeah. uh, to play down the severity of the situation mm. and deny that there was a triple meltdown for two months. Always, always the right move. Yeah, right? Suppress the truth. Right. That's what we got to do. Yeah, because it'll never get out. No. (laughs) 
Uh, unfortunately, the freedom of press in Japan has continued to decline since Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe came back from his second term in 2012 after he resigned, citing health reasons in 20, 2007. Well, he said, no, I'm OK. I ate a bunch of oatmeal and did some, I, don't I worked know out and I'm what fine. what happened. Like, <laughs> but he had he was prime minister for a very short time, had some health issues, supposedly stepped down, ran again, won in 2012, ha- um, has you know, ran two other successful campaigns and been reelected. Huh. Uh, he's maybe, still in power today. Well, maybe he went on a diet. Yeah, I'll show myself out. Wow. <laughs> Do you think I can? Uh, uh, I see what you're doing. Can I, I get, get uh, Norwegian citizenship? Do you think? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Norway's looking pretty good. Uh, uh, I don't know how they're handling COVID, but well, um, Sweden uh, was, was held up as uh, being a, an uh, exemplar of how to do it. Yeah, and then they. You know, they lost the game of chicken. They opened up too quick, and now they're in trouble. Yes. Um, but I don't know how Norway's doing specifically. But, you know, I'm like, I'm only like two generations away. Like, can I claim, like, blood blood ties? Ooh, I don't know. Maybe. You should look into that. Keep that in my pocket. Yeah, like, right? Things get real bad. Yeah. Uh, in 2014, the Abe administration forced through a state secrets bill allegedly intended to stop classified information from getting to Russia or China. Hmm. But the bill allows for bloggers and journalists to be jailed for up to five years for asking about something that is a state secret, even if they aren't cognizant that it is one. And TikTok users to be shot on sight. Right, exactly. It's not, I shouldn't make a joke. No, you shouldn't. This is not, this is, that's a bad news. That's a bad news. Print that bad news. (laughs) It is is a bad news. I shouldn't be laughing. I mean, here, like, you know, the president just walks out of the briefing room, but there it's like, Get the cuffs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Smash it. Take his camera. Exactly. Um, well, the, the bad news continues. In June 2017, Japan passed a contentious law that targets conspiracies to commit terrorism and other serious crimes, a law that criti- critics forewarn will strengthen government surveillance of dissidents. Well, it's mm, that's we're dealing with that here. We are. And it's weird because... And this is some happy, fun Sailor Moon time stuff to talk about. I know. But the kind of stuff that we're going through right now with certain groups, Japan was like, man, they're just so far ahead of everyone. Mm -hmm. They had that with, you know, like the subway attack and they've been dealing with that before. So it's, I'm actually kind of surprised it took them so long to pass a law like this. You think they'd immediately want to like... Okay, here's some freedom. Well, Get rid I, of these guys. I mean, I'm not I'm not an expert on Japanese government or anything. There might have been other laws that, like similar, I guess. But yeah. Why did you run for office then? <laughs> In 2013. I'll show myself out. <laughs> um, there oh, is... No, no, I'm the one that gets arrested for asking the question. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's a state secret. <laughs> Book them. Uh, there is also a form of self-censorship that Japanese journalists call uh, sontaku, a word that does not have an exact English translation, but refers to the Japanese social tactic of seeking to please others, typically superiors, by preemptively working in line with their perceived notions. Hmm. Yeah. So the journalists are just writing, and everything went great, but are they going like, like big wink, or... I think they're deciding what they're going to write based on... They're trying to keep their jobs? Yeah. Okay. I think they're trying to keep their jobs. They're trying to please their bosses. Is the next part fun? <laughs> this is depressing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I promise we'll get to some fun, but I got more depressing stuff ahead. Right, not too much more. Uh, okay. All right. Um, another element in Japanese journalism that many could cite as a limitation on freedom of press are Kisha clubs. A Kisha club or Kisha Kodabu uh, comes from the Japanese word Kisha, which means reporter. A Kisha Club is a Japanese group of reporters from a major news from major newspapers in Japan, such as Asahi Shimbun or Yomuri Shimbun, who work in the same building as political party and government offices. The Kisha Clubs get press releases directly from the businesses or agencies that they are appointed to cover. It is also called a press club in English. Um, organizations with a Kisha Club limit their press conferences to the journalists of that club. And membership regulations for Kisha clubs are restrictive. Hmm. This obstructs admittance to press conferences for domestic uh, non-member media, for example, smaller newspapers and magazines, <laughs> most of the foreign press and freelance reporters. Sorry, Tiger Beat, you're out of this. Right, right. exactly. 
Uh, the first Keisha Club was established by a newspaper reporter in 1890 in the response to ban imposed uh, ban imposed by the Imperial Diet on reporting by newspaper reporters. So this has been going on for a long time. Huh. The Keisha Clubs have been widely criticized both in Japan and abroad for supporting an, a, a drastic type of access-driven journalism that undercuts the caliber of journalism in Japan by suppressing criticism and making reporters spokespersons for the organizations that they are meant to report on. That's interesting. We have that here kind of in that, like, you know, if you're like the Washington Post, like your beat is the White House or whatever, then you're going to be the person that always right. goes to the briefings and things like that. But you aren't expected to... Uh, just repeat or parrot, you know, what the White House press secretary says. In fact, you're expected to push them and to get to the bottom of it, you know. Um, and so, yeah, it's weird that it's like, oh, well, you're, you know, you you work for us, basically. Like, you're just, basically. You're just the mouthpiece for our press releases. Well, it's, it's actually, it's really bad when you start looking into it like um not only are are they given like the, the information that they want them to give out and our similar papers are putting out very similar stories often um a lot of times uh these agency like like there's different like independent businesses have Keisha clubs too like for example going back to the Fukushima uh, Daiichi nuclear disaster TEPCO has its own Keisha club which is largely why they were able to control the narrative about the disaster for so long. So this is just, you know... The Keisha Club sounded so fun. Right? Just, it's TikTok all the time. <laughs> and you guys ruined it. Well, and then, like, a lot of times these, these politicians will, will take reporters out to lunch. Well, I mean, that, that happens. But the reporters uh, but... expected to, you know, eat their steak yeah. sandwich and then go, so what's really going on with the nuclear... Blah, bombs and, or whatever. And, and I don't think that they're really pressed and pushed to, you know, really get to the bottom of it and really do investigative journalism, huh. you know, so it's, um, it's, it's upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> I heard something about fun. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll move on. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Ichidaki Masu with Usagi. What did Usagi eat in this episode? No food in this episode. Yeah. So, um, my Heart is a Kaleidoscope, where we talk about fashion and Sailor Moon. What the heck are they wearing? Um, not a whole lot of clothes this week, which is fine. A lot of, uh, lot of uh, Sailor Scout outfits the entire time. Yes. I thought it was great that like when they were pretending to not like her, uh, Ami was glasses on the whole time. <laughs> you, you, like that was like a shield? I like I don't know. Like like you can't see my emotions. Yeah, maybe she was. She's like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna put on like a disguise or something. Yeah, so she was like goggles, you know, RoboCop goggles the whole time. Right. Like maybe like I have a really bad tell, so goggles. <laughs> I'm closed off. Right. My right. Heart exactly. And like, my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I can't really sell that I hate Usagi this much. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never ask her a math problem. I, mean, <laughs> I would just make her cry. Um. <laughs> Naru's mom is uh, wearing a light purple <laughs> nightgown with ruffles on the around oh, the don't, collar. Come on, what? Don't aggrandize it. She's wearing what the wolf is wearing after he eats grandma in yeah, Little Red Riding Hood. You see it in your mind. Yeah, move on. Oh, all right. Jeez. Um, I do like that the matching hat, and she's also wearing uh, light purple slippers as well. Yeah. Uh, Naru Asahina. Um, wow. Um. I will get to the description in a minute, but I think what is going on here with Nana's outfit is is this is the only thing I could really think of um, besides maybe being a nod to investigative journalism in the 70s is maybe it is a reference to the 1990s nostalgia for 1970s, like everything, like especially like fashion. Like, I mean, I had bell bottoms and other 70s inspired clothes in the 90s, but this is like next level <laughs> could be could be yeah i still saw you know like dennis hopper in apocalypse now where he plays the journalist journalist character yeah i totally see that too but more like you know girly and fun and platform shoes well even, even a little um bit, i'm an american yeah yeah Sorry. right um even a little bit dennis hopper in um uh, what is the movie we just watched easy rider yeah easy rider he's got a vest in that too he's got a fringe but yeah yeah, yeah sure okay. yeah i guess it's a fringe it's a, it's a jacket this it's guy not a vest. Is, he's captain america <laughs> yeah that's my dennis hopper i guess I, I, I think that's pretty good uh nana is wearing a bright red button-up shirt a light brown uh buckskin vest 
uh, wide bell bottom blue jeans with a single single yellow star on each leg. Uh, she is also wearing a bright red twisted headband that is tied with a bow in the back, a blue choker, a brown belt with a silver circular buckle, and very tall white platformed uh, heeled shoes uh, or clogs. Uh, which are amazing. And later when Usagi meets her at their apartment, Nana is wearing oversized glasses with big dark green frames that have (laughs) kind of like a scallop design (laughs) edges and yellow lenses. Yep. It's it's perfect. Yeah, it's It's, great. It's right on. Yeah. Um, Later we see Usagi and Naru um, wearing um, what appear to be the same aqua winter coat with toggles, pockets, and a hood. This made me wonder if this was maybe another part of their school uniform. I found when I searched for like winter coats and school uniforms in Japan, I I found one instance of an outer winter coat that you could purchase that was being sold as Japanese girls school student uniform, JK horn buckle coat trench. Hmm. But I found no other evidence that this is an actual thing. So maybe they have the same coat because they Shop are really the good store. friends yeah, and know. they like similar things. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe the animators were lazy. Th- that could be too. <laughs> yeah. Why not just make them a different color? I don't know. Yeah. Um, their winter scarves are also very similar uh, to each other as well. Usagi's is bright pink and ours is bright green. And they have large white pom-poms at either end. Hmm. And then we are at Villain Gage where you rate a baddie one to five dark stars, five being the most wicked. Uh, Nana Asahina, who is a freelance writer for the weekly Dokiri magazine, turns into the Yona, Yoma Oniwa Bandana. Uh, Oniwa Bandana's name is a reference to the Oniwaban, who were secret agents who worked for the Tokugawa government. The second part of her name is also referring to bandanas. Like ninjas? They're, they've become to be associated with ninjas. They're a little different from actual. I mean, you could just ninjas. be like, "I'm just, I'm just a guy." Right, right, right. I, I run a an alehouse or something like that, but I'm also a secret agent. Right. But like, she's like her costume is really like specific. Yeah, it's specific and it's reminiscent of a female ninja or the yes. kunoichi. Yes. Um, which I think have been overblown. I'm not saying what do you mean? there definitely were, you know, male and female ninja. That was a real thing, but I they didn't dress saying. like, like Naruto, you know, or, yeah, or right. the, thing, the kind of thing that you see necessarily, um, because you would, if you saw that person, you'd go, Oh my God, ninja, <laughs> you know, you would have clothes that could conceivably pass for regular clothes. Maybe they would like have secret pockets or you could tie them up so you could, you know, run better or climb a wall, but Right. It's it's a lot of it's she's the stylized ninja that we come to expect from she, ninja fiction. Less. Yeah, that's what's going which on. Which is here. awesome. Uh so Oniwa Ban uh worked under the direct order of the shogun and were in control of undercover intelligence age- activities. Their job mostly fre- most frequently embodied relaying any news about Edo, which of course is modern day Tokyo, uh to the shogun or staying disguised to investigate and inquire into the goings on of the countryside. They're kind of like reporters. Kind of. Oh, is Sailor Moon Ooh. making a statement here? I didn't even think about that. They kind of are. <laughs> they're they're reporting. Does, they're does going, the they're Japanese going undercover Jesse and reporting. Ventura talk about these ninjas trying to you know, make me bleed? That actually makes it even cooler, I think. Okay. Um, <laughs> their tasks were similar to those of the general inspectors and inspectors of the shogunate, uh, except for uh, um, they, they got their orders directly from the shogun. Um, uh, most historical novels and plays of the era portrayed the Oniwaban as ninjas or spies, a custom that continues to today. Uh, Tokugawa Yoshimune, uh, who ruled from 1716 to 1745, set up the Oniwaban as an elite team of originally around 20 handpicked Onmitsu, which was the word for undercover detective or spy during the Edo period, which again was 1603 to 1868. Sounds like a great manga, by the way. Yeah, right. Write um, all, all this down. I know. Cut and paste. <laughs> Who, who gave him intelligence and information about uh, shogun, shogunate uh, officials and daimyo um, while also guarding high-ranking officials of the government and operating as security guards in the Edo Castle. Oh, like Secret Service. Right, kind of, yeah. Uh, the kanji for niwa in Oniwaban, um, which means uh, garden or yard, which refers to the hearsay <clears throat> that they were lodged, lodged in the garden of Edo Castle. The, the hearsay? So apparently, there was like it was like a rumor 
that they were lodged there. So, like, I don't know if they got their name after the fact. Like, they're like, they're these secret spies. We don't know what to call them. Supposedly, it means field? It, it means uh, garden <clears throat> or yard. There, Well, you know, there's, um, and this is, remember, this is fiction, but in the Lone Wolf and Cub series uh, by Kazuo Kuhike. There's uh, Oniwaban in that. Right. And they're, they call themselves grass. Because they are everywhere and they mm-hmm. are, you know, in the grass. Yes. Um, so I don't know if that connects to yard or garden, but. I think you're, that's what it is. We did it. We, we ba, did it. Ba, 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 ba. Podcast over. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, the Oniwa band observed a strict group of rules, which sometimes prohibited them from socializing with the general population. Oniwa Bandana, uh, her appearance, she is wearing a very short, long-sleeved black dress with a midriff cutout and slips up both of her legs. She also has brown shoulder plate armor, brown arm braces, black fingerless gloves, and brown and black boots that go over her knees in the front, but end below her knee pit and back. Uh, She has the same bright red twisted headband or bandana that's tied with a bow in the back uh, as um, as Nana was wearing. Um, And she's also wearing a black mask that covers her nose and mouth, a brown choker and another bright red bandana tied around that I think is also twisted tied around the top of her left boot. Okay, She has long, light brown or gray hair. Uh, that is worn in a loose ponytail, and and the front part of her hair goes over the headband while the rest goes under it. Uh, she has sharp, dark purple fingernails, and she wears a sword on her back. Yeah. Uh, Oniwa Bandana says Bamban a lot, which I can only guess is a shortening of and repetition of her name. That's it. That's it. I thought you would have dug something up from nope. Tuxedo Unmasked for that. Nope. I, th- there was nothing else about that. So, okay. Um, uh, it's an that's, affectation. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's like Gollum. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like, can you just report without saying Bon Bon all the time? I've been here for an hour. <laughs> and it's not like she can't like say anything besides her name or anything right. like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Full sentences. Maybe she says Bon Bon under her breath when she's the journalist. <laughs> Can you tell me all about that? Bon Bon. 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 <laughs> Can you speak uh, directly into the that? microphone? Bon Bon. <laughs> yeah, just cut all the Bon Bons out. We'll be fine. Uh, she definitely likes to make an entrance and an exit and seems to appear and disappear out of nowhere. Um, upon closer inspection, I'm not sure if you saw this or not. This might just be me. At least it when... Um, so she appears... Out of the ground and out of the ceiling and disappears the same way in the Dark Kingdom um, uh, throne room. And then when they're in the in the cemetery, she appears out of the ground. And I'm like, why'd she do that? But I swear in the cemetery, it looked like maybe there was like a, a, a portal or something. Maybe. Um. So I don't know if she was able to do that or she's just able to like change the 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 physics of the area so she can just kind of appear that's the one you think you think that's the one yeah okay like that all right so so we'll go with that which is pretty cool um i i like that mad props uh she throws pieces of paper at kunzite and queen barrow and says bon bon and makes a square shape the camera like you said with her fingers and then different images of the senshi appear on the paper I think this power is, is somewhat related to what Nana does for a job as she's a, um, a photojournalist. So I think that's really cool. We don't always see that with the Yoma. Um, so I think that's really neat. In the, in the cemetery, we see Nana do some hand movements. Then she opens her eyes. There are no pupils and her eyes glow red. She floats and spins in the air and says her bon bon a whole bunch. And then she spins faster until she transforms into Oniwa Bandana, which is really neat too. Um... Besides her curved wide sword, which I think I've found out is a, a double-edged scimitar, most likely, um, she uses a lot which of... Which is weird. It, it's weird. It's, it's not really a ninja weapon. No. Looks uh, cool. But... It looks cool. I think that's why they did it, but... Maybe um, she... I don't know. She's got kind of a... I don't know. I don't want to make too many cultural connections here, but it's like Sinbad it's, it has that type of sword, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I can see Sinbad's got a headband and blousy pants and yeah <laughs> so, <I> don't know. <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> they're just like maybe they were just like we don't want to do like you know 
katana or straight sword or something like that. So but let's like, do this. Katanas are so cool. It's not like nobody gets like nobody's like oh, katana again. You know what I mean? Like so. Right, but scimitars are cool too. So let's give her a lightsaber then. It's, over, it's overdone. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, she also uses a lot of thrown weapons that are often associated with ninja. Uh, kunai, or throwing knives, she she throws at um, Naru and her mom. And the shuriken, or the throwing stars, she has in uh, the cemetery. Uh, Oni One Bandana also uses her bandana to choke Sailor Moon, um, which gets pretty bad at one point. Like, Sailor Moon's, like, on her knees, kind of, like, it's, it's a lot. Although they do that thing where they take time to show us that Sailor Moon's got, like, one hand inside yes. like when somebody tries to garret james bond from behind you know he gets the one hand up there yes. and it cuts his hand but it keeps it from like you know totally closing his windpipe yeah yeah i i, I appreciate show. that yeah um i also really like when she like created like four clones of herself that's pretty um that's pretty intense and awesome um and uh <laughs> she has some pretty good one-liners or as well uh, I'm helping myself to the jewels, Bon Bon. Death to you. We will turn you into mincemeat, Bon Bon. You insolent brat. So um, those are pretty good. Um, although not necessarily the most original, I really like Oni Wambadana's original design. I, I think that she has a lot of awesome skills, like throwing paper and having photos appear on it, uh, being able to appear and disappear out of a room or the earth, and cloning herself. She has a lot of weapons and looks... It looks really bad for Sailor Moon for a while there, and I enjoy that she says Bon Bon a lot. So I'm going to give her five out of five Dark Stars. I'm going five. Yeah, right? I mean, she shouldn't work. She's Right? Remember, this is 93 in Japan, 95 maybe-ish in America when mm-hmm. this comes out. Yeah. Um we should be sick of we are sick of ninjas really at this point. I think Larry <laughs> Hama did a grave disservice to all of us, and also with all of her stuff, she's just a, a pile of hats like sky high. It's true, um, but it all works, right? And if if the Dark Kingdom had one of her every week, this would be over. They'd have that crystal. <laughs> they would ru- rule everything. Like she just gets it done. Yes. And it, it takes the combined might of all five Sailor Scouts to, to take her out, essentially, after she's done all this other stuff. Not to mention the fact that she, in her civilian guise, is a investigative journalist, which reminds me of uh, Lois Lane, um, my favorite comic book character. Yes. And I like the, fu- the fact that she's being sent to investigate and find out the truth behind the girl's deception and fighting it's a neat angle it's a cool inversion of the girls usually trying to figure out the schemes of the dark kingdom and they're ice skating or something like that but in this right. case the dark Kingdom's like what's going on here mm-hmm. and they're trying to get in there and so yeah it's a great great flip i love it uh for sabu or dabu where we talk about the differences between the sub and the dub in in the dub nana asahina's name was changed to nancy vargas and the yoma's name of... <laughs> okay let me explain that real quick oh, okay please do i think it's a it's a combination of nancy drew a a girl oh, uh female yeah. investigator yes and um alberto vargas the pinup artist that's the only vargas i can wow. think of wow wow he's a weird he was a illustrator um, yeah. and i guess photographer too maybe so there you go Huh, okay. All right. I, I don't know I where else see. you'd get that from. I don't either. This is a kid's show. Yeah, right? Uh, and the Yo- oh, Yoma's name of Oniwa Bandana was changed to Ninjana, which yeah, it works. I don't really like. Like, what, are you trying to make the name Ninja sound more, more feminine, Deke? What, what are you doing here? Yeah, that's what they're doing. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> are, are, you know, because we, as we talked about, there obviously there were female ninjas. It's Deke. So, uh, <laughs> I know. I should let it go and move on. Uh, in the dub, both of the scenes where Sailor Mars kicks Sailor Moon in the butt were removed. <laughs> the scenes when <laughs> Sailor... <laughs> but it's a, it's a good repetition I, of a bit. I love it, but we, we got to take the violence out, right? Yeah. Uh, the scene when Sailor Moon cries after she was kicked by Sailor I Mars the second cry. time was also cut. Uh, in the dub, the scene where Naru gets Sailor Moon's attention, Sailor Moon asks where the Yoma went, and Naru tells her that she thinks the Yoma got away while you were bickering. That was cut, um, which I think there's also good comedic stuff in there. Yeah. Um, 
While the dub does mention once that this was Usagi's plan, the dub makes her appear to be more of a baby about its execution than the original does. That was a sigh. Yeah. Uh, the close-up of Nana's business card is cut. Deke loves to cut written Japanese for some reason. Hmm. Um, Usagi and Nana's interaction when Usagi brings her the letter from Sailor Moon was a lot shorter in the dub. Most of which is cut are the images of Sailor Moon uh, of Sailor Moon's writing, which was handwritten in Jap. You know her her letter, yeah, which yeah. is handwritten in Japanese. Right. Um, do you think that they took written Japanese out of the Deke a lot in an effort to towards anime localization? Is yeah. that what they were trying to do? Yeah, I mean, even though it was totally created, conceived of, executed by voiceover recorded every you know right. put onto vhs or whatever they use at the studio tape all done in japan right uh you don't want any trace of you want people to think that you created this your cartoon network it's so silly yeah i so. i think it's silly but anyways even though uh, sweat drops <laughs> i made it across the pond no yeah right <laughs> Uh, in the dub, Sailor Mars wasn't given the moon stick for safe keep- keeping by Sailor Moon. It's so it's so important to the whole thing. I know. Let me let me tell you what happened. Okay. Instead, Sailor Moon left the moon stick in her room, so Mars took it and brought it to the fight. And this is all in dialogue. Yes. Wow. Uh, it and then I agree with you. It it just totally completely changes it. In, in a horrible way, it's so important that Sailor Moon entrusts it to Mars, possibly because she feels like Mars is the most emotionally disciplined. You know, it just changes it way too much. Further assassinating Sailor Moon's character in the dub, Sailor Moon <laughs> begs the senshi for Look help. Madonna. Yeah. She she begs the senshi for help as she's getting choked by Oniwa Bandana. Or I guess actually Nin... nin what is it again? Uh, Ninjana. Ninjana. Yeah, I, it was so bad. I, I took Legos it out of for my... girls. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so now we are up to where we um, rate the episode. I like that the de- that the deception that the Senshis and Sailor Moon are fighting was all Usagi's idea to get into the Dark Kingdom, even though it might not necessarily be a gold star idea um i know that she complains about it but in the end we see her conviction and how much she has grown as a character uh, and i think that she is really starting to embrace her role as the leader i also like that usagi has entrusted ray with the moonstick, which shows that even though they fight often they have a deep respect and appreciation for each other so i'm gonna give this episode uh five out of five <laughs> jeez <laughs> i'm going five Here's yeah. why. Usagi wanted her plan to bloom like a beautiful Enchianthus. Yes. Which is misspelled as Enchithanus in the sub, but whatever. Enchithanus are these little white flowers that, uh, they're like bluebells. They're like white bluebells, kind of, um, at least in my research. And it almost does. <laughs> it's yeah. not quite, it doesn't quite bloom the way she wants to. But it's still an amazing effort from her. So much is going on in this episode. I already talked about the great idea, which I didn't even know until tonight, about the journalist who's investigating, but also is, you know, a ninja monster who would right. do the same thing in uh, olden timey days. Yes. Which I think is great. This show can cover anything. I mean, tabloid. Ju- who thought we would get to tabloid journalism? I who know. had that? Uh, not me. For episode 43. Yeah. Uh, but this show can do it, and I think that's great. This is also a real return to form for Ray. You're welcome for me complaining about it earlier because, of <laughs> course, the show has corrected it. Uh, a great Ray episode. Yes. Um, as you already said, uh, you know, serving to heal in some ways <laughs> the rift between, <laughs> at least professionally, the rift yes. between Usagi and Ray, showing that. Um, uh, maybe she can't dance or skate, but as a princess and as a leader, she recognizes the strength of her team, even if they piss her off a lot. Yes, which absolutely. Cyclops had to do all the time <laughs> in the X Men. Come on, Wolverine, get your act together. Uh, and so maybe it doesn't make any sense that we went double fives on the villain and double fives on the episode. But I want I want this to pop statistically. Mm-hmm. I want you to look at the curve and go, what happened there? Right. So you'll be drawn to watch. This excellent episode it, of Sailor Moon. It's fantastic. Uh, it's amazing. My English title is Friendship Shattered, Usagi's Fortitude. All right. I like that one. Thank you. Um, you, you took those notes. 
<laughs> and you and you ran with them. I think that's great. Uh, my D title is Bad News Travels Fast. Uh, I like it. And through the ceiling and floor. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Next episode, we are talking about episode number 44. Usagi no Kakusei. Shokako no Messiji in Japanese, Usagi's Awakening, a message from the distant past, the English translation, and the English title, The Past Returns. Oh, boy. Yep. So few left. Yeah, I know. I already know through mistakes I've made Uh that this is the last of Kunzite's uh, transformed yomas. And so what a what an ending for that run. Yeah. Um, not a lot of competition, but really saved it up for the end there. <laughs> and looking forward to what's coming up, but yes. so few episodes left. I know. In this first series. Yes. Before we have to, um, you know, start thinking about what we're doing for Sailor Moon R. That's right. Rated R. Rated R. <laughs> this is the, everything's too hot for TV now. Well, that's our show for this week, and the name of the moon will be punishing you next week with another episode of Sailor Noob. Oniwa Badana! Mm-hmm.